What do all these things have in common? PVC pipe, spool of enameled wire, a couple pieces of angle aluminum, and some 5 8 dowels. We're going to use them to build an experimental loop platform. Um, and if you want to see that, stick around. W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. So I had a choice today between watching Hallmark movies with my wife or do, doing a video that I wanted to do for a long time. And so I, you, you, you can pretty much guess which one I, which, what, what I'm going to do. Um, grab my notes. The most common comment that I get is, hey, can you tell me how many turns and how, what diameter and what size wire and what capacitor to make a loop for this frequency range? Or can you tell me where there's a computer program to calculate all this? And, and I thought about that, and I, I don't, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because you might not have the exact size wire. You might not have um, the exact diameter. You might not have the same capacitors. It might be wound differently. But so, so what we're going to do today is, is sort of one of those uh, teach a man to fish and you, f or no, <laughs> give, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, and he'll make loops forever. Now, when I started making loops like this, I, I had all those same questions, you know. Uh, boy, how much does the wire make a difference? And, you know, what capacitor should I use? And how many picofarads and all that? Um, and what, where is it going to resonate? But today what we're going to do is we're going to build a platform very similar to what I started with um, 20, years or so, 20 years or so ago. And um, with, with a few things that I learned over the years. Um, but before we even talk about that, here's all we're really going to need is a hacksaw and a drill. Um, this, this project is going to use PVC pipe, okay? And it's going to use some dowels. All right, these are all common items. These are uh, Home Depot, like a buck and a half a piece. You buy four of them, two feet long each. No big deal there. Um, and I'll give you all the, the measurements that I'm using to build this. And, but along with that, once it is built, we're going to wind it completely full of wire, and we're going to tell you how many turns we have on here. There's going to be 30 turns. Uh, from from uh, using this dowel here. You'll have close-up pictures of all this stuff. Um, the, the, the spacing in here is a quarter of an inch apart for each turn. So we know we know a few things that we, if we make a loop bigger it's going to pick up more signal but it'll also resonate lower. If we add more turns it's going to pick up a little more, more signal and it will also resonate lower. Um, different kinds of wire are not super critical. If we space those turns closer together it's going to resonate lower uh, because of the intercapacitance between the capacitance diff, um, that's added to the loop itself between each of these turns, more turns. So we know a bunch of sort of vague things, but we don't know exactly how many turns does it take. And I'm not going to say how many turns it takes for any given loop. But this, this, this show, this uh, video is going to be about how to build a very easy structure um, the drill, the hacksaw, dowels, and uh, yeah, I used a, a glue gun, but even that's not critical um, to building this. And none of the dimensions are critical. If you want to make these half an inch apart, go ahead and do it. If you want to make them a quarter of an inch apart, fantastic. Um, if you want to make this dowel have 30 turns, go for it. But using the techniques that we show here, um, you won't have to use any PVC glue. You won't have to, um, uh, you know, nothing, nothing is going to be critical, but it's going to be a baseline, a starting point. So when we finish this loop, it'll be about three feet on a side, roughly three feet, so a little bit less than a meter. Um, there'll probably be around 30 turns. I think that's what's on here. I, I count them. There's 30 turns. Um, and it'll be a platform to build on. So we'll find out where it resonates. Okay, um, and you probably own some sort of shortwave receiver or general coverage receiver, uh, and you're going to uh, use that 
or your SDR receiver to find out where it resonates. Um, so this is not going to be a build one exactly like this. This is going to be a build one and figure out how many turns you need. And if you decide, well, I'd like to make it go lower in frequency, I can make it bigger. If I want to make it go lower in frequency, I can add more capacitance. Um, all kind of the fundamental questions that I had when I was, when I was building this. So <clears throat> here, we, here we have uh, just a plain dowel. Okay, I think it's uh, 10 inches long. I got a picture um, with the details on that. And two foot PVC pipe. And in the end, one inch, 25 millimeters from the end, is a hole. Same diameter as, as whatever your dowel is. Oh, I don't have 5 eighths dowels. Okay, maybe you have 12 and a half or 15 millimeter dowels. What, whatever it is, not critical. So the dowel will go through here. That one I didn't finish the ends on. Um, and this is going to form the basis. Again, you'll see all this stuff close up in pictures. The basis of the loop. There'll be four of these arms. Okay. Now, typically, you know, you might want to say, oh, I'll get one of those little X's. In fact, let me just let me just grab one off the shelf here. If I have one. And I do. How's that for professional? No, no cuts or anything right there. Um, so here's the easiest thing, right? Two foot long piece of uh, PVC pipe and make a decision. Um, one foot, uh, uh, one inch in, two inches in, I don't care what that is. Doesn't matter. Your dowel, after you cut your dowel using a hacksaw, uh, again, my turns are a quarter of an inch apart. You can use whatever's convenient for you. You can make this half the size. But what happens is when you push it through the hole in the in the two by uh, in the two by four in the PVC pipe, you wanna you wanna leave just a little room on either side. So when you're when you're winding this, so you're gonna essentially be winding this whole four of these, um, and and then you'll have a exciter loop in there as well. Here's the problem. If you use a, an X like this, for the proper size one, of course, then, then you have to be very cognizant of where you put this in. You don't get much time with these, with, uh, with PVC Xs like this. You put it in and then you say, well, I'll make the whole X and then I'll drill out these holes later. And, and that can work too. But what I have is a little bit easier way to do that. And that is you take two pieces of angle, um, I'm using aluminum. They're, uh, I think it's one inch, so 25 millimeters on each face. This is probably an eighth of an inch thick. Doesn't matter, um, but those two pieces are crossed together like this. You you find out if this is a foot long, you drill a hole at six inches. You drill another hole at six inches here. Okay, then you cross them. And you put in, you put a screw in, and that holds them together. Okay, that's going to move around a little bit when the screw is in there. So what you do then is you put a couple of little grooves. You bolt it together. You make sure that it's a perfect, uh, perfect 90 degrees. Okay, and then what you do is you cut a couple of notches here and here. And then when you bolt this together later, those notches will lock this thing up solid. You'll see that. I'll put it together here in a, in a minute. Um, so that what that's going to allow you to do is to take your spreader and put hose clamps around it like this and align this with the arm going out that way and align it with the arm coming towards you and the one going towards me so that all of your... Your, your spreaders up here will all be in the same plane and you won't have put the thing together and have one spreader that's like that and one spreader that's perfectly horizontal. Now when you go to wind it, it's a real pain in the butt and doesn't work well. So I'll show you this in, in a step here. I'm going to take a, a quick break, bolt this together and, uh, and show you that a little bit more. Be right back. Okay, so once you've drilled your hole, once you've drilled your hole, this is uh, uh, this happens to be 12 inches. If you wanted to make it 14 inches or 18 inches, it doesn't matter. Just make both pieces the same size, find the center, and drill a hole straight through. Okay, just a simple 
uh, hole for an 830, excuse me, for an 832 screw. And then you take both pieces, put them at 90 degrees, run this, run this through, put your nut on the back. Let me move this up a little bit. Yeah, put your nut on the back. And now you have a 90 degree or um, every 90 degrees. Okay, this is really hard doing this uh, backwards. So then what you can do is put a small groove here, a small groove here, small groove here and here with the hacksaw and this thing will lock together. This is only finger tight now and it's locked together. So once you tighten this up with a wrench, you're in fat city, okay? It's, it's not gonna move at all. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And uh, let, me, uh, let me grab a couple of the pipes and uh, let, me, let me zoom out just a little bit here, hold on. Okay, so. We've built, I'm gonna assume you've built four of these. I'll show you a little bit more in a minute in the pictures of what's going on here. But you've built four of these, okay? So one is obviously gonna go, one is gonna go in here with hose clamps, okay? Another one's gonna go in here with hose clamps. And I'll show you, I'll do that in the vise here. Uh, I'll take a shot from farther away, and I'll, I'll just show you the, uh, the the whole thing assembled. So I'll be back again. Okay, so we've tightened this up, and now it's extremely strong. Okay, it doesn't move at all. So I'm going to drop it in the vise. Take a couple of my hose clamps, and I'm going to take one of my spreader bars here. Place it inside there, and I don't know if you can see the end of it, probably not, but okay, so there's the end, right? I'm going to have to make sure that this is 90 degrees on every one of my, my arms going out here. So an easy way to do that is just drop a couple of hose clamps, literally. <sighs> drop a couple of hose clamps on there, and tighten those up making sure that this is at 90 degrees. Then add another one here, here, and here. And now you've got all four of them assembled and you can actually see, um, you can line them up by eyeball. So you wouldn't be able to do that if you were using one of those uh, PVC T's. That's a real pain in the ass to do. Um, so this, this thing allows you to line it up any way you want. And Again, I said like this loop will come out, the perimeter of this loop will be about three feet or a little less than a meter on each side. But suppose, suppose that's way too big for you. So you would cut this down. And now, the, now you, would, you would have it only, only this much. So now your loop would be smaller. But so the, the point here is, this is a way to build something, excuse me, to build something that is adaptable to anything that you want to do. When you get done building this and you say, hmm, the, uh, it only resonated to 190 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz, something like that. Well then, how could I make that go higher or lower? We're going to take turns off and find out exactly. But if you wanted to make it look, resonate all the way down at, at say 100 kilohertz, then what would you do? Well, you'd make this a little bit bigger. Or maybe you would add a couple of turns. You would add a couple of turns. So this is not a exactly how to do it. This is a platform for you to experiment with. And by building one of these, you get a feel for how many turns, how long the wire is gonna be needed to be. This one's gonna take about 300 feet of wire. Uh, I'm using number 22. You could use number 24, you could use 18. Uh, just remember as you get the higher wire size you go, the the more stress it's going to put on a lot of these components. So let me uh, let me build this whole thing, and I'll I'll be back um, in another shot here. Stand by. 
Okay, we're over back at the vise again, and I'm going to try to do this. I'll show you a couple and then maybe speed the rest of it up so it's not so boring. Um, here's our first one. We'll just place our hose clamps on here. Okay. okay, now I didn't tighten it up all the way because I want to make sure that I can adjust this. There's one. This is one. I'm going to line up the other one. That's all I'm going to start. So I'm going to So now I have a platform that I can wind with wire, and here's here's another thing that's pretty cool. You might want to try. It's a couple of these things. These are the feet. You can put, that's why I left an inch over here, so you can put them on and stand this on the floor and tune it. So let me get a close up shot of that. Okay, so now let's go into the feet here, do a quick, quick look here. Now that's not quite exactly right, but I haven't glued anything at all here. And you could also put another couple of uh, inches of pipe underneath this to stand this loop up off the ground by a foot or so if you wanted to. So there's one of our winding uh, spreaders. Here's another one of the spreaders. I haven't really tweaked these in, but I will before I tighten everything else up. So, move back here. So there it is. A a loop that stands by itself. Um, we're going to wind this next. Let's do a close up here. Okay, so notice notice over here how the, there's one groove here and there's another groove that comes on the other side and it's centered. There's 15 here and 15 here. Hot glued in the center. Um, the other one I haven't hot glued yet, but the dowel just fits in there. You can see that it isn't cut there. Again, if you really care that these are spaced, it's nice that they're spaced. It's nice that they're spaced evenly, but if you only needed, you only had 12 or 10 turns, you'd still be able to use this process 100% to be able to figure out you know, where this loop landed. And if it landed, when I mean landed, I mean when you wind this, where this loop is gonna land frequency-wise. So even, even if it was too small uh, for what you wanted, you could always say, oh, well that's easy. I'll just build another one of these, okay? Only it's gonna be a foot longer. Or it might be six inches shorter because this is too big. Maybe this is too big for where you want to place it. Maybe you want to place it on a workbench somewhere. All right. So now really, really comes the uh, the hardest thing of all is winding this. Uh, it takes a little bit of patience to do that. But when you're done, you're going to have a fantastic platform here. I'm going to wind it with... This roll of number number 22 wire, I'm going to mount it on this dowel um, on the other side of the room so that makes it easy to unroll. And we'll put it in the vise here. Hopefully the camera angle will be good enough for you to see. Um, I'll wind the whole thing while, we're, while, we're, while I'm on the air here, or while I'm live. But uh, that will be boring as hell, so I'll speed it up. Anyway, let me get all that stuff set up and we'll be ready to go here in about a minute. We're mounted on the wall here. I have uh, just a piece of threaded rod. So that's going to be how we pull the wire off. The loop is over there, ready to go. So let me set up for that. Okay, we're going to start off with one, with one end. We'll pick a point 
and we're going to tie it off. We're going to leave a tail of a couple of feet or a foot because we're going to need that. And uh, let me let me start. Let me put the camera on here and start winding. Not sure how this is going to come out, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're starting the wind process at 135. 135. So keep track of how long it takes to do it. Here goes. One turn. Two turns. Okay. Now, if everything went okay, you will begin here, right there, and you will end there. And everything will be in line. So that means you haven't missed anything. Here's the gap in the middle. Hey, okay, there's a gap right here. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break here. And we'll come back and put some feet on this thing, solder, uh, tin up the ends there, put our tuning capacitor on it, and find out where this thing resonates. And then we'll tune it from there. Okay, here's the loop. Got it sitting on its feet. It's all wound up. And I'm using my little handy dandy um, test, little test um, capacitor here. It's two sections of 365 picofarads. So roughly 720 to 750 when it's closed and about 15 picofarads, 10 picofarads when it's open. And you can see I have it um, the wire coming from this side of the loop goes to there and to there. So this is the lowest frequency and the highest frequency using this capacitor that this loop is going to resonate on. So I just tested it. Let's turn it on. It's 660 kilohertz. Uh, shoot, I'm not, not using the right hand here. Sorry about that. Changes often, right? That the goalposts move all the time. Okay. 
that's all the way open. So it, it barely resonates at 660 using the, the um, 350 picofarad capacitor all the way open. So now let's go down to say 200 kilohertz. All right, we're down at 200 kilohertz now. <sighs> this is going to be hard. I might want to put this on a tripod, but before I put it on the tripod, let me just let me just show you one thing here. The uh, the loop ends up being we'll hook to one side there. All right, it ends up being 34 inches, and what's that? Uh, 86 centimeters for anybody over there across the pond hello folks uh, that's the diameter excuse me the uh, perimeter so four times that and 30 feet uh, uh, excuse me uh, that times uh, four times the amount of uh, turns which is 30 gives you the amount of wire that's in this particular loop all right so I'm going to put this back on a tripod so you guys don't have to vomit during this but this testing so stand by all right guys you're gonna have to take my word for it <clears throat> I'm gonna play with the capacitor now and find out where this resonates at the bottom of the band uh, this switch is in both sections can you see that no you can't all right anyway let's see if we can get it if it, it remember the top was uh, 660 kilohertz and with the single capacitor here let's see where it goes Okay, not down to 200. Let's go to 250. Okay, you're not going to hear stations. You're going to hear my ambient noise inside here. So let's tune this. All right, I'm not connected either. This is just proximity, right? The loop is here. This is here. There's no connection. So it's throwing a pretty big signal over there. All right, so with one section, it goes down to about 250. Let's go back to 200. And I'm going to turn on the second section of this capacitor. So now we'll have a total capacitance of 700 picofarads. Okay, so let's see if it resonates at, at 200 now. Okay, there's 200 without any problem. Let's go to uh, one, one, uh, 180. Okay. Again, you can hear... Oh, i got to turn the gain up. I don't even have this... I didn't even have the, the RF gain up. Okay, so you can see it peaked quite sharply there at 180 kilohertz. Let's go to 160. Getting close to the end of the capacitor range. Okay, so it's down to 160. 150 maybe? That's as low as I can go with this radio, 150. Yep, it's almost at the end of it. So it'll probably resonate down to 140 kilohertz. Um, so, what do we know so far? Let me. I'm not going to write all this down, but maybe somebody out there could grab a pencil and paper and do this. Uh, quarter inch. Let me let me refocus here. Okay, so quarter inch spacing on the on the uh, turns, 30 turns, 34 inches in diameter or per, on, on each side on each leg times four. So figure out how much water that is, and then figure out. Um, I'm going to give you the numbers that I get in our actual testing here. Let me turn that down. Last time I made a video with that thing going, it was, it was so way, way, way too loud. Um, now I'm going to start removing turns, and I'll do the top and the bottom of the band again. So if somebody could, it would be really nice, because I don't want to keep stopping and writing this stuff down, um, but I'm going to take off two turns from each side. So what was our bottom again? Our bottom was 150 and 660 so that's a, a four times the frequency range all right I'm going to put you on pause I'm going to take off two turns from each side I'll show a little bit of that okay I'm going to pull off two turns oh by the way it took 15 minutes to wind this coil so if you're willing to put in that much time to wind it you could do you know you're, you will have it'll be good so I'm pulling off uh, this is one turn here all right so I only I'm only gonna take I'm gonna take two turns off so one more here okay 
So let's cut this. All right. And what I usually do is just make a loop around there and one knot, and that's plenty to uh, to tie it off. Okay. So I'm, there it is. All right. I'm going to go do the other turn, and I'll be right back. Okay. We're back again. Um, you can see that I've taken off two turns here and two turns here. It, it would be best to do this symmetrically. If you only wanted to take off two turns total instead of four, you would just take off one turn from this side, one turn from this side. So uh, I'm going to go up to the camera now, excuse me, the radio now. And let's see where this thing, how far it goes. Let's start off with the uh, top of the band. Let's see what kind of difference that made. Um, we'll see what 660. Flight okay. from New York City. I don't care if you're leaving okay. from Newark or JFK. It peaks, it, it peaks quite nicely right there. To Seattle, and that's almost yeah, as far it's as pretty loud. Okay, here okay you can see, and I'm not even connected. Look at the difference there. So okay, so now let's go up to 710. Into that corner in the Pacific Northwest. You gotta get on Oop. that long flight. 710. You gotta go and hopefully okay. we'll have another 710 hotel. is another New York. Okay, well we made it past 710. And let's try uh, uh, let's see. 740. Whoop. Ah Jesus. Let's go to 730. I get caught by the YouTube police. Okay, well, it ends up, it tops out right at 7.30. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom end of the band. Let me, I, I am recording this now. So 30 turns went from 140 kilohertz up to 660. This is 26 turns. And this makes it up to 730 kilohertz. Let's see where the, where the bottom is now. Let's go back to 200. And we'll clip this all in here and find out if it resonates at 200. Yep, pretty big peak there. 160, probably not going to make it. Ooh, it just makes it to 160. So two turns off, uh, four turns off, 26 turns gives us 160 to 730 kilohertz. All right, so we're making our way up the band here. Let me uh, yank two more turns off and we'll get another set of numbers. All right, so we're down. We took two more turns off each side. Oh, that's, uh, it didn't hold very good. Help, help. Okay, that's good enough for now because we're going to be pulling more turns off anyway. So um, that goes, uh, that goes over here. Okay, so now there's four turns off of each side. So we're down to 22 turns. Let's see where it goes. Let's go to the high end of the band. We, th we know it's going to be above 730 from our chart here. Uh, let's go here. Let's go up to 800 to start off with. Okay. Oop, are you on the radio? You're not on the radio. Okay. Okay, so 800, 8, 8, 800 is fine. How about 80? Number one, a landmark church in the East Village is engulfed in flames after a fire spreads nope. from an empty building next about door. about 850? Number two, New... No. 840? All right. That's weird. That's weird. 800 again. Okay, yeah, it's right about there. So 820, 8, 820 maybe. Determined that the efficacy is relatively high. Yeah. Okay. Turn it down. So 22 turns gets us up to uh, 830. 830 kilohertz. I think we're going to start gaining a little bit more on the high end here as we start taking turns off. Um, now let's go down to the bottom. Let's start off at 200 kilohertz. 200, zero, zero, enter. And let's see if it still resonates down as low as 200 kilohertz. Yep, still 200. Before we were at 160, so let's go to 180 here. OK, 
Okay, just makes it to 180. I'm going to record that and I'll be back in a second. I'll take two more turns off. All right, so we're at uh, 18 turns now and we're going to go up to the top end of the band. We're going to start at 900 kilohertz. Okay, noisy as it might be, 900 kilohertz. It resonates at 900 now. When we left, le last left our Cape Crusaders, it was 830. Okay, so 910 maybe. Wow, huge signal there. Okay, um, let's see, uh, 940. Nope. 920. Okay, 920 is the high end from 830. So 920, Write, writing this down with 18 turns. Now, I'm not doing this, <laughs> I'm not doing this for my health. Uh, I'm doing this so that you can see that if you build big, you can make it smaller. If it's too small, you could easily solder onto one of these wires and continue winding. But this is, this is like a, Remember those 50 in 1 uh, kits you used to be able to get from Radio Shack? Um, you know, build, it's an experimental platform. So maybe if you made these three feet long and you had a place to put a loop that big, you can get this to resonate 100 kilohertz without any problem. So, okay, all right, back to the task at hand. 18 turns is at 920 kilohertz. Let's go to 200 and see if it still resonates there. Okay, here we go. I'm going to tune. Woo. Doesn't look like it. Let's try 250. Oh, yes, it does. There's 250. 200. Whoa, just barely makes it to 200 now. So now we're, instead of 180, we're at... 200 to 920. All right. It's going to start making a uh, bigger difference as we go now because there's there's only uh, 18 turns. We're going to we're going to go down to uh, 14 turns and this should move things quite a bit because the percentage of turns we're taking off is much greater. Um, the other question I th was just thinking about somebody might ask, well, how do I hook this up to the radio itself? I don't have a uh, you know, I'm not I can't do it by proximity. Well, um, there's an external, oh, Jesus, that was nice, huh? Um, there's an external uh, connection on this radio, just like there would be for any, any shortwave receiver or SDR or whatever, whatever it is you're dealing with. And we can put a single turn on here, which I think I'll do now. I'll put a single turn around this loop. Okay, let me, uh, let me pull it back down here a little bit. But one turn around the center of this loop and we'll couple that into the radio. So we're no longer going to be doing this by proximity. We're going to couple it into the radio with one turn. So be right back. I've now put a um, single turn, single yellow turn of wire just so you could see it. To show you how uncritical this is, um, I had to add two pieces of wire together to make this. But it goes all around the perimeter, one turn. That's plenty of coupling. You might want more, you want, might, might want less. If you want more coupling, you can add another turn. No big deal. Just add the turn. Or if you want less coupling, you can just couple between three of the legs instead of four. It's all up to you. Anyway, it still resonates at 200 kilohertz. Okay, we're down to uh, 14 turns. You can see how far in we are from the edge of the loop. Still using our same capacitor, but now we have, can you guys see that? Yeah. Um, we're coupled directly through the input on the Sony radio over here. So I started off at 200 kilohertz. Let's see how low this antenna goes, what the parameters are again. Let's zoom in on the, on the radio a little bit more. How's that? Okay. All right, so, uh, wait, does that mess you up? No, I guess not. Okay, so let's go. Uh, it doesn't make it to 200 anymore. How about 250? 
Yep. 250 kilohertz is right at the bottom of the range. So now let's go up to, uh, let's say, one megacycle. All right, and let's tune up there and see what happens. Okay, so it definitely resonates at one megahertz. Let's go to uh, a 1050 out of New York. They're trying to continue to develop that. Still can get a little overheated, but... Okay, I'm off resonance now, obviously, but Blue look at that. Their own 20 yard line, first okay, 10. so there's no problem. Let's try 1080, a local here in Connecticut. Turn the game back They're down. You know, I mean, Turn that down a little bit. Okay, so it makes it up to 1090. 11... Uh, 100. Let's see. Yeah, it just barely makes it to 1100. So I think you get the gist of it. I'm wondering if I should do one more. If I do one more set of turns, uh, last time we were at 920, now we're at 1080. If I do another set of turns, it's going to bring us up probably to 1300, something like that. It's going to bring that bottom end up. Now, I, I want to I show one other thing here. Um, let's go down to 200 and what, what do we have here? I forgot. 250? Let's see. Yeah, barely. Uh, okay, barely resonates at 250 with every, all the capacitor and everything closed up. I'm going to grab a 960 picofarad fixed capacitor. Why 960? Special reason? No, I happen to have a half a million of these things. Well, not a half a million. But I'm going to put that in, in here in parallel. Oh, resonance is gone, right? So let's go down to uh, 150 kilohertz now. Nope, doesn't make it to 150. Let's go to 200. So it resonates at 200 kilohertz now, and if you take that fixed out, you can go all the way back up to the uh, 1080 that we were at before. So don't be afraid to put some switched fixed ones in. If you want this loop to go from, say, 250 down to up to um, 1080, then you just use the, two, the, the capacitor, the variable. If you want to get it down to 200 kilohertz, actually it's lower than that, 180. Oh, lost my. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm being, being sloppy here. 180 and probably 170. Yep, 170. So now, with the addition of that one capacitor, and try different values. You know, if this is 750 picofarads, and where we started off with that adding another 900 or so is going to take you way below. So with a full set of turns, this variable capacitor, and this guy right here, um, this would probably take you down to uh, roughly 100 kilohertz. So perfectly usable for the long wave bands. Um, if you used more capacitance, it'd get you down even lower. The tuning range's capacitor is going to be very limited when you, when you put in the fixed capacitance. So, uh, all right, I'm going to do one more removal of two more turns, and, and then I'm going to finish up here. Okay, we're back, and this is the last, uh, the last one. <clears throat> we're down to uh, 12 turns. I didn't, go, I didn't take off as much. So, let's start off at 200 kilohertz. Again, we're not going to make it. We know that. So let's try 300 kilohertz. And three. Okay, so the bottom is 330 kilohertz right now. So with 12 turns, it's 330K. Let's go up to the top. Let's go to uh, 1360. And we'll turn the volume up a little. Switch that half of the capacitor out. Just gonna watch, watch them, watch them, try to do that. Look at that. 
from no signal, and this is, well, this is pointed at it, to um, I, I, you full know, scale. It's, it's like anything else. You know, my okay, wife so says I'm now 1410 is another bird. local. Oh, listen to that noise. I don't know where that's coming from. So, but it resonates to 1410. We should have seen this. About 1500. Yep, 1500. Okay, barely makes it to 1520. So with 12 turns on the loop, we can make it to from 330 to 1520. So if I had taken off four turns instead of two, we would have went up <clears throat> to the very top of the broadcast band, no question at all. So I guess what I'm going to do now is uh, put this away and maybe review some of the stuff that we learned. And hopefully somebody will will make one of these loops or something like it and leave a comment because um, it really would be nice to know that somebody out there uh, had some success using a very similar um, experiment to what I have. So I'll be back in just one minute and we'll be signing out. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> um, what did we learn today besides... How to waste a whole, you know, like a pound of uh, number twenty, <laughs> number twenty-two wire. Um, we learned that we can assemble without the use of PVC cement, without the use of any fancy uh, uh, tools, um, with just a few hose clamps and a couple of pieces of PVC and these um, spreaders. We can build an experimental loop platform from which we can derive. Um, the frequency, the resonant frequency, high and low, based on whatever uh, tuning capacitor tuning capacitor we happen to have. Now this one is 750 picofarads with both sections combined. This one is 1500. So with that one, and this was remote control, um, I used to have this remotely out in the woods have a little clutch bearing in here that someone made for me. Um, anyway, <clears throat> with this it would it would go down even at lower in frequency. So we learned that with, with this very easy to build platform, there's no reason in the world to go, well, I don't want to try building a loop because I'm not sure if I'll have the right amount of turns. Um, it's very simple to do. And like I said, I, I started doing this 20 years ago when they're, you know, Computer programs weren't weren't so good. There wasn't much much out there. There were no um, no uh, programs to tell you how many turns and the spacing and all that. And even if even if you do find one, chances are it'll get you close. But with this, you can build it to whatever frequency you want. Shorten these up, make them only this long, maybe a foot long instead of two feet long, and you'll have a much more compact loop. Um, I have it up here on the table, but if you wanted to. You could add six inches or so on the bottom of each one of these PVC feet and have it very, you know, very comfortably uh, uh, at, arm, at your normal waist level to, to tune the capacitors. So let's see. <clears throat> With this loop being 33 inches, 34 inches on a side um, and 700 picofarads, 750 picofarads of capacitance and 30 turns. Resonant frequency went from 140 up to 260. Minimum to maximum capacitance on this on this tuning capacitor. You, know, you should build a jig like this if you're ever going to experiment because it's really convenient and easy to hold and everything. 26 turns got us 160 to 730 kilohertz. 22 turns got us 180 to 830 kilohertz. Uh, 18 turns got us 200 kilohertz to 920. Um, 14 turns got us 250 to 1080, and 13 turns got us 330 up to 1520. Um, I think if you took two more turns off, you would probably make it up to 1700. And the other thing that's cool about this is, don't take two more turns off, take four more turns off. Get it to resonate at 2 megahertz. Take, take six more turns off and get it to resonate at in 75 meter band. There's so many possibilities. Anyway, uh, I just want to thank everybody who uh, is out there supporting me by subscribing to this channel. 
Um, I'm at 975 right now, so that means only 25 more people um, to subscribe to get to my goal of 1,000. Um, plenty more videos are on the whiteboard over there of what to do. They're not all about loops, but there's a lot of really weird stuff like uh, non-line of sight um, LED communications, cloud bounce. It's, that's one that I've, I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I had an 8 kilohertz transmitter on the air with a pickle barrel using the loading coil of 22 pounds of number 22 wire. That, there's, I've got some stuff I want to do on that. Um, anyway, there's a ton of stuff more, more coming. If you please subscribe. Help me get to my 1,000 mark. And thank you, everyone who's been out there. 73 W1VLF from behind the big loop saying 73, I guess. See you later. I'm out.